Greetings, everyone. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Truth Seekers. Yeah. And as always, I'm Dan Horton. I'm here with my friend Erica Reesberg. Yep. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. And um, as usual, there's a lot going on oh, in the yeah. world and uh, yeah. there's a lot happening. We're coming to you on the full moon in Leo and um, coming it's a up. Thing. It's a thing, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Coming up to 2-22-22, a big day. Huge. For a lot of people, yeah. whether they know it or not. Right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. There's just so much. I, I'm, I'm like, I know this much about astrology, mm -hmm. so I just, but I do know that like lots of things are happening, and I'm feeling it because I'm more sensitive than I ever have been because I do the work every single day, whether or not I want to, mm. to find out who I really am, not the programs. Well, you know, you started off with a really important thing there. I think what you just said. Yeah. Um, because I try to, you know, do as much work as I can too, and I'm pretty consistent. Um, but I think I know that I can relate, and probably I'm guessing a lot of you out there is what do you do when you're really not feeling like it? Or, you know, I think typically in our lives we, you know, we can get busy, right? There's always so many things to do, and um, maybe you have some tips on what you go through specifically where when you're not feeling like it or you're pulled in a lot of directions on how you're still able to maintain your your practice of growth. The the first and foremost thing I do is go into my breath. Um, and I do a deep inhale through my nose and exhale through my mouth a few times. And then I'll put my eyes into peripheral vision because that gets me out of here, which is mm. a big thing since mm -hmm. I'm a former academic. <laughs> And then um, I'm going to invoke my friend Angela again, swallow. And that, so um, eyes in peripheral mm -hmm. are your first diaphragm. Swallowing is your second. Then you have your diaphragm, your amazing diaphragm. Mm -hmm. And then squeeze your bladder like you're holding it and you have to pee, but you can't right now. And that's your fourth one. Mm. Once you do that, Feel your sit bones. Just feel them. What are they sitting on? What's the texture that you're feeling? And feel your feet. What are they on? What's on them? And like just doing that is going to shift because you're going to be more present in your temple, mm. which is going to take you out of that loop in your head. Mm -hmm. And then you can be like, okay. And this is a practice for me because I've had anxiety most of my life. So this mm. is something I really, I really like. Mm. Um, and I'll do a side note on that in a minute. Um, but like really for me to just fully feel my diaphragm when I'm breathing, feel the expansion of my ribs, feel my lungs expand and contract, feel every go, everything either go up or down and just really being present to that for a few minutes. Mm that gets me out of that cycle. And I have been anxious most of my life. I didn't realize this until about three months ago mm. because I'm so sensitive. Mm -hmm. And this is me doing practice for a long time. I didn't really feel the anxiety because I'd had so much heart protection. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so like, as I'm doing more and more deep work on myself, even though like it's a never ending process, but like it's, it's a really good opportunity for me to bring up the most recent experience of me feeling something that I have never allowed myself to feel before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right before the episode, I was telling Dan and, and Adam gave me permission to say his name. So okay. um, my friend Adam and I went on a trip on the coast last week for his business. And I was in innocence. I'd spent time with the Redwoods. I was like just feeling that divine energy of connecting with nature. And I was just in a different space than he was. And um, I was pointing out a playground because he does servicing on playgrounds. And so I was like, hey, here, you're cold calling. This is a place while well, we're driving. And he's on a call with his, his, um, his business manager. And so he was in a different space. I did not feel that because I was in my innocence. Mm -hmm. And he abruptly stops the car, turns it off, hangs up the phone and says really loudly, and I'm not going to do it right now, but like, okay, now you have my attention. Mm. What? Now, what that did initially was shut me down. 
because I couldn't handle that energy because it's something, it's a pattern mm -hmm. that I grew up with when my dad would just yell at my mom to shut her down. And so I felt that mm -hmm. and I felt myself shutting down and numbing out. And by the time we got to Fort George, I couldn't feel myself. And I was like, wow, I am numb. This is the first time I have awareness mm -hmm. that I'm numb, which is really cool because like I have awareness that I'm numb. But like I couldn't get myself back. And so we continue on the trip and I feel myself getting more and more shut down. And by the time we get to the hotel, he offered a couple more triggers. And there's nothing wrong with those triggers. He is just showing me things that I don't have awareness of in my subconscious. So like I, I love him for that because he's given me a lot of opportunity to see what's in my subconscious. But like by the time we get to the hotel room, I'm like... And I don't even know what the feelings are because I've shut myself out so much. All I remember is saying, I don't effing know what I'm feeling. Just leave me alone. So he left me alone for about two hours. I meditate. And then he comes back. He's like, I want to do something with you. I want to eye gaze. And that broke me down. Mm -hmm. What later in the week, I found out that one of my clients was given and and these are two related points these are like deep points into what's what's expanded me um my my former mentor offered services to a client of mine that i do and that just felt icky and so then i have a session with angela who does really deep embodiment and all of a sudden i feel this crack i don't know what it is she tunes in, she's like, Erica, that's rage. What, I have rage in me? She's like, yeah, it's okay, because it's sacred. And then I lost it, because I've never allowed myself to feel rage, mm. ever. And I have, I'm human. We all have rage. I have rage. Of course. Um, and so those trigger points of Adam and my client telling me these experiences just brought up this like wave. I, I was like, I couldn't articulate. Like I was feeling so much energy come through me. I just opened my mouth and tried to breathe because it was so intense. Mm. And I wanted to scream, but I couldn't because nothing could come out because it was so deep. I was like, whoa. So I processed that, I, I cry. I feel like the, the, the pressure valve releasing a little bit because I know there's more in here, but like I felt it releasing enough so I could actually feel it. I was like, whoa. And so we do this for about a half hour. And at the end, she's like, well, tune in to when you first felt rage. Oh, when I was six weeks old. I know that's like a weird thing, but I know because I was placed in traction at six weeks old mm. because my hip wasn't fully formed. And the rage I felt. And you don't remember that consciously. But I don't remember that consciously, but I remember it in my body. Mm. Infuriated because I was laying on my mom and she was singing me songs every morning. I went from that to traction. Like that. Mm. It's I, a traumatic experience yeah, for, I, for anybody. I couldn't process it. So like I had this rage at my parents for doing this, even though they're helping me. And I know that now. The doctor who put me, like, here, you need to put her in traction. I was at home in a traction that my dad had his woodworking shop class build for me. So I was home as opposed to in a hospital. But that rage doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. So she not only gave me permission to feel it, because I couldn't give myself permission to feel it. But then she said this magical thing. Love the part of you that loves that rage because mm -hmm. there's a part of me that loves it. There's a part of me that really enjoys having that rage. I, I don't know. Right? Like we, well, because yeah. it's shameful. To well, it's, rage. it's, it's shameful to you consciously. You touched on a lot there and I'll just say that, um, you know, when you're talking about loving that part of you and it's, it's, I think that's what we forget, right? Yeah. You know, we've all lived however long we've lived, but we've all been, subjected to certain programming in our lives, mm -hmm. certain things that, that worked for us at one point in our lives and that didn't work. Those things don't just go away. Right. And I think that's what, you know, as a society, we've forgotten to 
not only to continue to relate to those things, we just brush them under the rug, mm -hmm. we try to repress things, right? Yeah. And we have, so we have all these, you know, I mean, people are, are ostracized in society for, for being schizophrenic, Yeah. right? I mean, in some ways, people that are schizophrenic, to me, I think it's like they've, they've tapped into that other level because they're, you know, they haven't integrated it, mm -hmm. right? And we don't know how to deal with that in right. society. Right. But it's these voices that are coming out that we all have, and we all have a million thoughts right. going on. We just repress the them. We just repress them. Yeah. Because we've been able to, you know, we have to go with what works at that time and mm -hmm. what we've learned. But we all have, you know, we, I had this men's group meeting last night and we were talking about this because a couple of the different men had identities coming up mm -hmm. um, and they didn't realize that's what it was. Yeah. You know, they just thought, this is, this is who I am, mm -hmm. this is what I'm dealing with. And as we were able to kind of unpack that and move into why they were feeling these certain things mm -hmm. and realize that this identity is from childhood. This identity is cultural. This yeah. identity, and I'm being very basic on how I describe that, yeah, right? Yeah. It's a little more complex, but if we can go in there and thank that, yeah. thank that identity, mm -hmm. love it because everything wants to live, mm -hmm. right? And we know yeah. that a thought form is a form of life. Mm -hmm. And so if something you've experienced, especially for a long period of time, oh yeah, and it had to get you through something, mm -hmm. right? So it's solidified in oh, your yeah. consciousness. Yeah, and your body. In your body and your consciousness, yeah. all of it. So if we don't, you know, relate to that in some way mm -hmm. and give it love yeah. and give it comfort and then allow it to, you know, move through and say, thank you mm -hmm. for being there for me. Thank yeah. you for getting me through this. Yeah. You know, I still love you and I want you as a part of me, but now this is what we're going. This is where we're, mm -hmm. you know, we can, we can transform, we can move. Yeah. Yeah. You know, having that conversation with yourself and yeah. really integrating that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's so important to talk to people like Angela or have men's groups or have yeah. somebody that you can talk to because it's that interactivity, that interrelational um, understanding, mm -hmm. you know, that you can have with yeah. people. And then you don't think that you're, there's something off. There's something, there's something wrong, right? right. That's why we don't want to deal with these things because we think, right. oh, I, there, we have there's... the shame and the judgment. And right, the... right. Yeah, we're like the worst whole... judge on ourselves by yeah. far. Yeah. And then, then after we judge ourselves, you know, continuously, then we start to judge others. Mm -hmm. If we can let go of that inner judgment, yeah. then we can let go of how we judge others as mm -hmm. well. Until we do that, right. it's pointless. Right. Right? Because but it's, it's going to come out unconsciously regardless. But what's the cool thing about the judgment is when you see yourself or, or like, oh my gosh, I just like, it's bringing awareness. When you're judging someone else, oh my gosh, that's me. Right. Oh, yeah. Right? If you can be aware on that so, level, yes. Yes. Without a doubt. Or when you feel the trigger happening, mm -hmm. like I felt the trigger happening, I couldn't do anything in the moment because it was so fast and I never experienced it that fast before. I didn't have the consciousness. Right. I had the awareness to know that it was happening. I didn't know like how it was just like so fast. And it was like, okay, so now I get to do what something Angela calls us rewind the tape and play it back every time I feel it to find out the different layers, like so I can finally feel where the first trigger went to shut me down. Mm -hmm. But it's a slow process. It's, it's all about embodiment for me. But would you say the awareness was almost instantaneous? The awareness was almost, because I felt it. I felt it, I was like. Not something you had to think about. It just, boom, it just, I, I just saw it. I was like, I felt my innocence and I felt it shut down. And I was like, fuck, whoa, what was that? Really, it was powerful. It was like, wow, I've never felt that shut down so fast. But I haven't been that open to feel it shut down that fast. Mm -hmm. So it's it's this blessing, right? Because a I am that innocent now. I feel that much more innocence coming within me, and b, wow, I'm that sensitive. And c, now I get to unpack what the different layers were that 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 just shut down to keep me safe. And I think that's another, this isn't exactly what you just said, but I think a, a larger, a, a very big aspect of that as well is why we don't want to look at it and what you're going through right now, which I'm, you know, admire what you're going through with this because I don't know if there's no way to go through it without feeling, you know, the pain, but to me, it's like you have to, it's when you dive into something like that, right? you know you're gonna go through mm -hmm. some pain. Feelings are gonna yeah. come up. Yeah. I mean, that's really the way that you transmute it. And right. we've also kind of been taught from our childhood, I mean, men more than women, but I think we've all been taught in some aspect of, you know, 
not only do you want to repress that because it's not good for your outer life, mm -hmm. so to speak, but yeah. also it's just, it's not good to bring it up within yourself because you don't want to go through pain. You don't right. want to go through the suffering of growth. But, you know, the biggest cliche of the world, but it's true, is growing pains. Right, right. So and, like, but for, if you know that, if you can be conscious of that, knowing, look, look, I'm going to go through this. Right. This is what's going to happen, but it ne it needs to be done for this to move and shift. So this just right. came in, and I think it's really interesting. Like women are trained to be good girls. Mm -hmm. Men are taught that anger is the only emotion that's acceptable. I would say for the most part, yeah, yeah. that's right. And a lot of so it's like so so I'm I'm repressing my anger, which is just a human emotion. You're repressing all the other emotions, so you can just have anger. That's the depth of the programming. Mm -hmm. It's like I have to deny an aspect of myself. You have to deny like 90% of you until you start unpacking the programs. Mm -hmm. Because that's what's acceptable in society. Seeing a man cry and experience your emotion. Oh, that's kind of a scary thing. Seeing a woman express her rage, channel Kali, and just be in that rage, that righteous rage. That's not really a, like that's that's a marginalized woman right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's becoming more and more acceptable. But like for thousands of years, if a woman was like in her power and 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 holding that sacred rage of like, no, you can't hurt that kid. No, you don't slaughter that animal mercilessly. That's a crazy woman because she's standing in her power. I would say that there's been times, though, in thousands of years. I mean, we have had matriarchal runs where we have had, you know, um, we have had, but like the. But with, sure, yeah. I mean, it's 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 been it's been that way, and I. It, but it's interesting now because I think that we're a lot of us, men and women, because we are in the shift. Yeah. Are confused if anything is acceptable or it's not. <laughs> it's like you really have to pick yeah. certain times or. Yeah. You know, because it's it's not necessarily acceptable for men to be angry anymore either. Not that right. it should be or it shouldn't be, but right. it's just I don't know where we get to a path or get to a place where you know it's it's okay for us to somehow have those moments of emotion that we're going through things that that would be acceptable. You know, you know I don't know what the answer so, is for that. So when I'm feeling. The first step is permission for yourself. I think the first step is to give yourself permission to give yeah. yourself space. Yeah. Number one. And then say, hey, look, I just got triggered. I'm going to need a few minutes here exactly. to process it. Mm -hmm. And that is acceptable. Right. It's more acceptable than like reacting to someone because you got triggered. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, yeah, I can, res I can feel it. I can feel the emotion. I want to feel the emotion. I want to feel how I'm processing it. I don't need anyone around me. I'm going to take a few moments and walk to the other side of the room or walk into another space and just feel it mm -hmm. because I, I'm honoring that and I don't need to put it out on anybody else. I couldn't agree more. I think if that became the norm that we could avoid a myriad of things yeah. that then yeah. start to spiral out of control, mm -hmm. right? Because we live in a, a culture of reaction. Yeah. You know, and, um, it only takes a couple moments sometimes just to be, if you can just step back, sometimes mm -hmm. it only takes a few seconds. Yeah. Just step back. Mm -hmm. And for that to kind of register is okay. But, but you know, it's, it's more about like the quick wit, the, the timing, the mm -hmm. move, the this, the that, the this, and then it becomes, it has a life of its own. That's not necessarily yeah. true to, to anybody that's involved. Right. Well, we, we right? did that when we were in Arcata, Arcata, um, I was looking in a map to find places to drop off my flyers for body talk for animals. And he was asking me a question, but I was focused on the, the directions and he pulled over and he said, you know what? We're in different spaces. Let's pause. Mm. And it took me out of where I was. It took him where out where he was. And then we would be able to sync again mm -hmm. because we recognized that we were getting out of sync. Right. And it was just like a simple, like stop breathe for a couple minutes. Don't talk. Mm -hmm. Just be present with yourself. And then you can hear. Right. Because when we get in that loop of listening, mm -hmm. we can listen without actually hearing. 
or hear without actually listening. Right. Yeah, either way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, because like we get caught here and what I'm feeling and what I'm about to embark on is heart coherence. Like how do I be a leader by listening to my heart? Mm -hmm. That means I have to be responsible for my feelings. Not that I have to control my feelings, but I have to be wise enough to recognize when I feel them and feel them and not project them out on anybody else. It's a very important thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I think that, uh, that's very wise and very mature that you, that you guys are able to do that together. That's so pretty amazing. I would say it's a, it's a valuable relationship in your life because, yeah. um, you know, it's not easy to do that with no. anybody. No, it's not. No, it's, this is the first time I've been able to do that. Mm -hmm. So this is like a new, this is a new growth right. point for me of like, oh, wow, I can actually do that. But it's interesting. I a thought just popped through as you were talking about that, because I think that it may be easier to do that than we think if, you know, because when you start relationships with people, right, no matter how they start, usually it's there's something in common and you're, you're getting each other on some level mm -hmm. and it's great. And we don't usually have those conscious conversations, right. even with somebody that you're really close to, if you mm -hmm. have a partner, mm -hmm. right? You know, because maybe you're involved in this kind of whirlwind bliss or whatever's happening. Right. And then you move to a certain level and then you almost feel like you're beyond those conversations that maybe you wanted mm -hmm. to have in the beginning. Um, but if we could get to a place where somehow when we, you know, are in the beginning of a friendship or relationship, we should be like, hey, listen, I just wanted to throw this out on the table. If this would be something that, that you know, mm -hmm. might be of interest to you is for me, I've just found it helpful mm -hmm. um, sometimes to just take space. And it's not yeah. it's not toward it's not against anyone or toward anyone. It's just, you know, the way that my process works. Mm -hmm that sometimes I just need to step out and, and take some space and kind of get myself centered. And, and maybe that's something that will work for you as well. And, and that way, not that there will be anything that, that occurs between us. I'm not, I'm not putting any self-fulfilling right. prophecy out there, right. but we have that permission. Right. Well, and you can do that at any point in the relationship. You can, I know, but I think sometimes it, it gets, it, it can get muddled. Right. Right. So like you know? one, one of the things that, um, I'll give <laughs> Adam gives me so many examples. Um, we did another trip earlier this fall and we had an agreement and he broke it. And I felt the triggers. Mm -hmm. And afterwards we sat for dinner and I had this awareness, like my third dimensional self felt betrayal. And I articulated that. I said, okay, this is where I am. My human self, just as a human animal, this mm -hmm. is what I'm feeling. But when I bring myself to a higher level of consciousness, what happened is we had an agreement and you broke it. Mm -hmm. So what do we do to form a new agreement that, and this was on the fly. Mm -hmm. Like I had never had this come through before. I'm like, okay, so what's our new agreement? Like, cause we, we have our friendship. We have an intimate friendship. We're not um, physically intimate, but we have a very deep emotional relationship. And so, okay, so if our, if our agreement is that we're going to just be open with each other and talk to each other about anything, let's explore this avenue. Mm -hmm. And you can have that conversation at any point in any relationship because you're bringing a new awareness in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You say, hey, you know what? I, we've been on this path for a while. Let's just have a conversation about where we are. What are our current statuses? What do we want? What do we feel like we need? And how can we move forward where we both get what we need? That's not a difficult conversation. It's, it's new. It's uncomfortable. Well, I think difficult but, is relative, yeah. right? You know, and, and the fact that it can be uncomfortable makes it difficult. Right. Right. Um, but it, it, all, it all goes back to what you were talking about earlier is if you can give yourself that space and you can be to use the word again, sovereign within yeah. yourself yeah. and, and real, and because, you know, codependency is a real thing, mm -hmm. right? It is. And, and there's so many aspects of what codependency is, mm -hmm. but I think part of it is, is, 
you know, you're worried about what the other person's going to think or right. how they're going to feel. You don't want to upset the apple cart. These these kinds of things, which yeah. I which I think most of us have went through. Yeah. At one point. Oh yeah, or especially another. if we're sensitive. And right now we're going through it in a societal way. Let's mm -hmm. face it, in a big way. No yeah. matter what sides you're on any of these issues. Right. Um, but yeah, I think the the key is like what you said. You know, is you go through. You got to be consistent with your practices. You mm -hmm. got to be consistent with your processes. Yeah. And um, you know, get out to nature as much mm -hmm. as you can. Do these things, and then, and then you become so much more comfortable in your own vessel, and yeah. you can have those kinds of conversations. Yeah. Which again, it's like that old term, right? It's it's simple, but maybe <laughs> it's not always easy. Right. 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 But it gets easier as you do it. And now right. that you've done it and you've been doing it, it's going to become, I would guess, easier and easier yeah, for you. Yeah, because like I, I have the awareness now. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, wow, this is something I didn't even know I had. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now I get to explore this more. Mm -hmm. And and if you bring that that innocence into the exploration of you, mm -hmm. um, you can really start to see all the ways you've tripped yourself up, all the ways you've repressed yourself, all the ways you've shamed and judged yourself. And you can just be like, you can be curious. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I didn't know that's how I shut myself down. Okay, well, let's, let's try to figure this out. Or, oh, I didn't realize I was shaming myself about this because it's something my mother constantly shamed me about. Mm -hmm. Is that mine? No, actually it's not. It's something that she taught me. So, like, we can do that with anything if we slow down. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, like in the past week, I have a hot spot. I'm being stubborn. I don't want to renew it because it's, it's just something I don't feel like doing right now because I'm being stubborn and that's okay. But, like, what it's done is I don't have internet when I'm at home. What does that do to me? Makes you go within. Mm-hmm. It's been very healthy. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I'm going to be honest. Like, it's not fun to be like, oh, yeah, I can meditate more now. But how healthy is it? Well, yeah, and you've given yourself, you're, you're, you know, uh, you're just, you're citing an example now that that was kind of thrust upon you. But mm -hmm. you're also somebody that gives yourself the time. And that's, you know, that's the key is, is finding ways to give yourself time. Yeah. Even if it's like five minutes. Well, what I've been doing, you know, for quite a while now is getting up before the sun. And, um, that's really been a great thing because, you know, the energy is so much different because there's no noise out there. Yeah. And, uh, so it's much easier for me to go into, you know, whether it's a gratitude list or going yeah. to a meditation or going to something similar to you mm -hmm. that I've learned through the Toltec practices is the dreamer stare, the, mm. you know, the diffused stare where you're just kind of letting everything meld into one. Mm. And these things are, they're easier. Mm -hmm. Um, before the sun yeah nobody's up and so wherever you are out there maybe you can give yourself a little bit of time you have kids you have a job you know we get it everybody's busy but maybe just give yourself a few minutes in the morning yeah. uh, maybe a few minutes before bed and um that can make a world of difference yeah as well definitely can. So, and if you can in the middle of the day just like breathe for like two minutes yeah say some positive affirmations yeah. to yourself you know as well so well we hope that you've learned something today and um we all have these parts, we all have these identities, yeah. and if we can leave you with a suggestion or a call to action would be just to, you know, when something comes up, if it feels uncomfortable, you know, just as Erica said, you know, take a step back, okay, what is that about? And don't judge it, just be with it, Yeah. you know? And if it, it feels like it's not serving you anymore, thank it, you know, allow it to, maybe it's not ready to go yet, allow it to come up, if it keeps coming up for a while, but recognize it every time. and. Yeah. And eventually, you'll be able to integrate it and yep. transform it and move through it. Mm -hmm. But I think it'd be a good thing if we can get away from those old thoughts of repression and just yeah. keeping things down mm -hmm. because they don't seem to serve us any longer. Because yeah. they will rear their head. Mm -hmm. The shadow needs its voice to be heard. Yes. And if we hear it, then we can transmute it. Right? Yes, we can. So we may see before 222. We may not. Uh, if we do, or maybe we'll do a, a podcast on 222. That would be cool. So in this full moon energy and, and reaching up to this uh, amazing time, we're wishing you love and light and uh, that everything comes through for you exactly how it needs to come through. 
And so it is. And so it is. Until next time, we're Erica and Dan on Truth Seekers. Namaste. Namaste.